have preconceived tempo, they have preconceived dynamics, right? Preconceived time signatures, preconceived key changes, all of that's built in. Well, you know what those are? Those are tactics. And you have to think of them that way. And as you're creating your song, you have to create it in real time. When you speak, when I'm speaking now, I'm finding it, right? I'm going from idea, impulse, need to teach, blah, 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 and that's translating itself into, into language. There's a whole process that happens. It happens when you, when you speak in life, it happens when you act in scenes, and it needs to happen when you act in songs. The song needs to be created in that moment. You have never sung the song before. The song is a tool that the actor uses in order to achieve an objective. It's as simple as that. And it needs to be found by the actor singing it. Oh, oh my God. Oops. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm creating a... a, a this is an obstacle. <laughs> so does that make sense? It's a, it's, a, it's a key idea that you need to hold on to. Then when you watch really good singers, it looks like they've never sung the song before. Right? That that lyric is just coming to them for the first time. And it's coming and it's arising out of need. You're not reciting something that somebody already wrote. Sondheim didn't even write the song. You're writing the song. You're creating it in front of us for the first time. And this show of all shows is the most actable musical I've ever seen. Everything is a person solving a problem, right? Every line is that. I, when, I, when I took over uh, for the role of George in Sunday the Park with George, did anybody know that show? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did the soldier and the Alex for the, for, the, for the opening of it, and then Manny Petitia left and I took over for him, and so I had, a bunch, I had like a two-week session with Stephen Sondheim and James Levine. And some really long, I wish I had recorded them, some really long sessions with Steve alone. And he, um, he would take a line, and we would spend 45 minutes on it. In terms of why I was saying it, what it was coming out of, what I was trying to achieve with it, right? What the coloration of it, what the tone of it was in, in order to, 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 to apply to the particular action of that particular moment. He's that specific. There's nothing random at all in everything he writes. And he's writing completely out of situation. He puts himself entirely into the character's shoes every time he writes, and he's looking at the world through that person's eyes. Okay? So your job is to go back to the moment of his creation and recreate. <laughs> he's needing a little attention. It's to is to find that same moment. Okay? So the song is newly minted by the actor, right? Was that me? Was that him? Did the prince really kiss me? And kiss me? New idea. And kiss me? And did I kiss him back? Right? It's all happening for the first time, ever. And you're solving a problem with it. Okay, though so that's why the song grows. That's why all the songs are usually stronger and louder at the end than they are at the beginning. Um, every, every new moment needs to be re-realized by the actor. Everything, all the shifts are new tactics, so that the variety that you get with Daddy, I want to see if you can Daddy, I want to see all of that happens inside the song. And it's hard because what happens is that we become slaves to the idea that it needs to be sung in a certain way. And, and a, lot of, a lot of musical people um, do not like me when I direct plays that they're, that they're the musical directors of because I completely... Uh, reinterpret much of what is on the page. A lot of musicians, and, and rightfully so, especially choral musicians and people who deal with choral music, are going to make sure that everybody sings it exactly as written. And when you sing chorally, you have to. Otherwise, it's mud. But when you're singing solos, you need to interpret the song. And that means, and I've worked with Steve a lot. I've done like seven shows with him. He just emailed me. I'm taking students to New York in, in May, and he's going to come and talk to the students for me. He's fantastic. And he, but his whole thing is about when he writes the rhythm of that particular line, did a prince really kiss me? All he did was he, took, he takes every song that he writes, and he writes out the libretto, and he does it in his head as an actor without music. Did a prince really kiss me? Did a prince really kiss me? Da-da-dum, da-da-dum, da that's how I would say it, and then he transposes that into music and gives it the, the note values, okay? And, sat, and, he, and I've heard him say that. He said, Bob, sometimes I get it wrong. Sometimes it's not quite right, but it's the closest I can get because all I can do is deal with, with 16th, 8th, quarter, 
have the full notes, right? He said, that's the closest I can get. He said, but I want the actor to completely interpret that thing. Look at this in the Bernadette Theaters. You know, listen to some of the people who really do a lot of Sondheim, and look at, look at what they're singing, and then look at what was written. Much of the time it matches up, and much of the time it does not. They're phrasing it. They're interpreting it. The one thing you have to be careful with Sondheim is that you can't back phrase. Okay, then it goes into jazz. Um, it becomes very, very much, you stay, you stay within the bar, okay? But within that bar, play with that thing and find where it lives, and find where it lives for you so that it's expressing the need and a tactic that you want to apply to that particular lyric, okay? It's hard work. It's hard work. But the beauty of music is that it's so powerful, and it's so emotional, okay? It's always emotional. Uh, Billy and I were just watching a, um, <coughs> reruns of American Idol. Anybody here American Idol fans? No? No. <laughs> Love that show. Guilty pleasure. <laughs> Guilty pleasure. And you're watching some of the finest young singers in the world, I venture to say, working and being mentored by people who really know what they're talking about in terms of interpreting songs. Okay? You can learn a, a lot about singing through this show. But... The thing is, when you're watching it, it's amazing how powerful it gets. And you'll be watching, you'll be in the middle of a song, it's completely out of context, and all of a sudden you find yourself welling up and starting to cry. Right? You think, why does that happen? How does that happen? Why is it so visceral? And one of the reasons that I think it is, is that because vowels are emotional. Okay? Consonants are not. Consonants are mental. Consonants are what we develop later on in life when we start describing objects and, and, and uh, um, you know, inanimate thoughts. Right? Um, things like, like intellectual concepts, con that the, the consonants come into play, right? When you're a child, you don't, you don't, you know, call for, for a need like uh, hunger, and you don't go, da, 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 right? You don't do that. You go, ah, ah, it all comes right from here, and you do, ah, need, want, okay? That's pleasure, that's passion, that's need, that's anger. I mean, all the emotions are expressed through elongated vowels. It's called sustenato. In Italian, and it's when we take that vowel sound and we elongate it, and when it's connected to a passion, all of a sudden we start to weep because it's real, and we know it's coming from the core. Okay, the consonant just tells us what the what the what the idea is, but the vowel tells us what the emotion is. So when somebody sings that money note, and they're at the top of their game, and it's wide open, and the, they have that hippo jaw thing dropping, and it just oh, it just completely exposes their soul, we weep along with it because it's so. Core emotional, primal, visceral feeling just spilling out through art, all controlled through art. Okay, so that's that's why song works. That's why musicals cost so much money. <laughs> you know, that's why as an actor, if you go into musicals, you're going to make twice as much as you will in a straight play, because it hits something in audiences so powerfully that they don't even know what hit them. Okay, it's a beautiful thing. So, any questions so far on what I've said at all? Does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. Is it exciting? Yeah. It should yeah. be. It should be because it's 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 the it's the it's the core of what you're doing, right? It's um. Uh, it makes it so that only you can do it. You can't get up there and pretend that you're Mariah Carey or Bernadette Peters or you cannot imitate. Nobody cares about that. All we want to do is see the unique combination of you in these given circumstances, and there's never going to be another moment like it in the world, right? Nobody is ever going to be able to do that wolf and prince like you did last night, right? They, you, they can't. It's impossible. And what you did was not imitation, okay? That's wonderful. You bring 100% of who you are to it, and you commit with 100% of what you've got, and you are going to, you're always going to, it's always going to land. And we're always going to believe it. Your credibility level will be up here because we know it's coming from here, okay? So songs are hard work. The problem with them is that they are so difficult to do, they take, require so much technique. And so you're singing, you're sitting there worried about, oh my God, I got a plan, I got a, and I've got this huge money note. And sometimes you'll have a money note in the song that's going to worry you for the entire song. You can't even sing the song because you know, I've got that damn, you know, eval on the G, you know what I mean? And it's coming up and it scares me every time. And so the whole song is about you being afraid of that note, right? <sighs> Throw it away, who cares? Best singer I ever worked with. Lena Kudrova. You don't, probably don't know who she is. She, uh, she was in Zorba the Greek in the movie. She won an Academy Award for the role of uh, Madame Hortanus, an aging prostitute. And I did, my first Broadway show was a revival of Zorba with Anthony Quinn and Leila Kudrova. And both of them were in the film. And I played opposite Quinn and Leila. 
And um, no, it was an incredible experience for me. But you know, Leela couldn't sing to save her life. I mean, in terms of what we consider bel canto, gorgeous singing. Uh, Goodbye, Panama. Don't forget me. No, no, no. She was just squawking and squeaking and popping all over the place. Okay. And every time she sang, the audience wept. And she even said she was, she was French Russian, and she said, "Bon." She said, I cannot sing unless I sing from my heart. And she said, and Tony is breaking my heart, and it's difficult for me to play. He was very mean to her. Okay, another story. Over a couple of beers. But anyway, <laughs> she, she, was, she was completely and totally organically connected to what she was singing, what she was singing for, what she was fighting for. And, you know, she would hit her money note, and it would be, ha, ah, ah, ha, ah, ah, ha, and it would quaver and stuff like that. And the audience, I'm telling you, weeping, <laughs> weeping because it was so honest. She won the Tony for it. She won the Academy Award for the film, then she does a musical version on Broadway and won the Tony for it, okay? It's really not that important how technically gifted you are. It's great if, you can, if the two come together, absolutely, but whatever you do, make sure you don't lose the sense and the meaning of the song and, and sacrifice that for beautiful technique. Because the beautiful technique is like an empty gong. It's like a five-finger exercise. We'll listen, we'll go, oh, that was very pleasant, oh, beautiful piece song. And ho hum. Right? You guys, can I, remember when I said you got the wrong director if you care about notes? I, you know, you know. of course, y'all want to, we talk about, I, I, of course, you want to hit the notes, but if you don't, I don't care. Sacrifice the note for emotion. Mm -hmm. Any day. Exactly right. Any day. Exactly right. Oh God, I didn't think she was in here yet. <laughs> well, this is awkward. You can have them both. <laughs> never, never, never stop working on your technique. Right. right. Ever, ever, ever. You keep singing, and singing is a daily activity. Right. It's like if you're going to be running in the Olympics, you mean you're going to be running every day to stay in shape for that. The same is true of singing. I just got offered a role uh, to, to, do, to do 42nd Street in, in my, the town that I live in now, and I turned it down because I knew I didn't have enough time to work to, to get in the singing shape for it. Right? I, I'm taking some kids to New York and London, and it started rehearsal the day after, and I thought, I cannot be getting my voice in shape while I'm on tour, and then come back and all of a sudden sing 42nd Street. So I, I turned it down because I knew I, I would not be up to it. It takes, it takes that much prep. Okay? So never stop working on your technique. It's critical. And the, 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 the glory of it is when you get all of that technique and talent and all that passion, and then you put them together, you know, you basically got, uh, you know, Bacchus and, and uh, Athena, right? <laughs> got a reason and art and passion and, and chaos, and you put them both together and you create this unbelievable synergy between the two, okay? So that's what we're looking for every time we go out, okay? All right. Um, and the other thing, the last thing I want to say, <coughs> there's two things that I, that I teach in my school and two principal elements. One of them is excellence, okay? Always striving to be excellent. Always striving to be the absolute best you can be every day. And the other one is joy. If you do not bring joy to your work, something's wrong, right? Most theater people have it innately. But every character that you do, every, every character that you, that you research is looking to to fulfill themselves and to make their situation better than it is. Nobody is up there to feel sorry for themselves, ever. And as soon as they do, the audience drifts away. We have to see the, 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 the actor engaged in a struggle to achieve something that's going to make their lives better. So that's the joy that fuels the, that, that journey, okay? So there's always that wonderful, wondrous expectation of hope which keeps it in, turns it into a positive objective instead of a negative objective. All right? You have to find the beauty in it. Every, I don't care if you're playing Hamlet. You've got to find the beauty and the joy in it in order to make it palatable. And to make it so that you can do it eight times a week. Otherwise, you, you blow your brains out. Okay? All right, cool. Are we cool? Yeah. Okay? Got a strong platform in terms of an idea of, of what to work on? Okay, good, good. What I would like to do then, and we have to like, off, like close to 11, too? Mm -hmm. 11 and okay, five. What I would like to do is to get some of you on your feet and, um, and, and, and work through a song, okay? Sing it, talk about it, maybe take a section out and work on it, you know, to see what happens with it. When I, when I teach and when I direct, there's always an initial resistance and, and fear factor when you get up in front of people, and that's just, if that's human nature. After about two or three weeks of it, people